A series of shootings occurred on October 22, 2014, at Parliament Hill in Ottawa. At the Canadian National War Memorial, Michael Zehef Bebo fatally shot Corporal Nathan Cirillo, a Canadian soldier on ceremonial sentry duty. He then entered the nearby Centre Block Parliament building, where members of the Parliament of Canada were attending caucuses. After wrestling with a security guard at the entrance, Zehef Bebo ran inside and had a shootout with Parliament security personnel. He was shot 31 times by six officers and died on the scene. Following the shootings, the downtown core of Ottawa was placed on lockdown while police searched for any potential additional threats. A Royal Canadian Mounted Police investigation into the shootings is ongoing. The attacker, Michael Zehef Bebo, was a 32-year-old Canadian habitual offender and drug addict from Montreal. Considered by several acquaintances to have mental issues, he had been observed by acquaintances and mosque staff exhibiting erratic behavior. Zehef Bebo, who had a Libyan-Canadian father, had converted to Islam in 2004 and visited Libya. At the time of the shooting, Zehef Bebo planned to leave Canada for the Middle East, living in a homeless shelter in Ottawa while waiting for the processing of his Canadian passport application. According to RCMP Commissioner Bob Paulson, the passport issue was central to what was driving Zehef Bebo. Zehef Bebo made a video prior to the attack in which he expressed his motives as being related to Canada's foreign policy and in respect of his religious beliefs to acquaintances and co-workers. He had previously expressed support for jihadists and others in the Middle East resisting the West's intervention, but was not known to the police to be a terrorism risk. In his mother's opinion, the attack was the last desperate act of someone with a mental disorder who felt trapped, classified by the RCMP as a terrorist act under the criminal code. It was the most serious security breach at Parliament Hill since the 1966 Parliament bombing. It took place two days after a man used his car to run over two Canadian soldiers in St. John sur Richelieu, Quebec, killing one. The two incidents, which attracted international attention, raised concerns about the effectiveness of police actions to prevent terrorist attacks. The prevention of radicalization and the security measures in place at federal and provincial legislatures. The Canadian government had already prepared a bill to expand the powers and courtroom anonymity and surveillance powers of the Canadian Security Intelligence Service. Canada's spy agency, which was due to be introduced the day of the shootings, and was postponed by the event. The government plans to introduce new anti-terrorism measures. Security at Parliament Hill is to be stepped up. On June 3, 2015 it was reported that RCMP officers have started openly carrying submachine guns on Parliament Hill as part of a visible increase. 2. Security Background On October 20, in the 2014 St. John sur Richelieu ramming attack, Martin Cachorulo attacked two Canadian Armed Forces soldiers. Rulo was a 25-year-old QUE acute BE acute COIs who became a Muslim convert in 2013 and was a supporter of the Islamic State of Iraq in the Levant. Rulo used his car to run down the two soldiers before being fatally shot by police after an ensuing car chase. One of the soldiers, Warrant Officer Patrice Vincent, age 53, subsequently died from his injuries. The terror threat level in Canada was on October 21 raised to medium in light of Vincent's death and due to an increase in online general chatter from radical groups including Islamic State and Al-Qaeda in his address to the nation following the shootings on October 22. Prime Minister Stephen Harper referred to the October 20 incident as an ISIL-inspired terrorist attack. Although both the October 20 and 22 attacks led to the death of Canadian soldiers, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police has ruled out any direct connection between the events of October 20 and 22 shootings. 
National War Memorial shortly before 10 a.m. EDT, on October 22, 2014, witnesses saw Zahaf Bebo arrive at the National War Memorial carrying a rifle, which was later identified as a 30-30 Winchester Model 94 lever action hunting rifle. He was dressed in blue jeans and a black jacket, with a kefir scarf over the lower part of his face. He approached Corporal Nathan Cirillo of the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders of Canada, who was one of three sentries from the ceremonial guard posted at the tomb of the unknown soldier. At close range, Zahaf Bebo shot Cirillo twice in the back, fatally wounding him. Cirillo, like all others who have stood sentry at the memorial, carried an unloaded firearm. It was only minutes before the end of the sentry shift, which ended at 10 a.m. CPL, Kyle Button and CPL, Brandon Stevenson, two other soldiers on sentry duty, attempted to stop Zahaf Bebo, but they were shot at by him and forced to flee to the other side of the memorial. Zahaf Bebo then pulled down his scarf, held his rifle one-handedly over his head and yelled for Iraq, CPL. Anthony Wiseman, who was nearby, then attempted to stop Zahaf Bebo, but Zahaf Bebo attempted to run him over. The three soldiers then attended to Cirillo, along with bystanders. They applied first aid to Cirillo, attempting to resuscitate him, before paramedics arrived and took him to hospital. Meanwhile, Zahaf Bebo returned to his vehicle, a small grey Toyota car which was parked on the south side of Wellington Street behind the memorial, and drove west along Wellington a short distance to Parliament Hill, where he abandoned his vehicle, past scattering bystanders. He ran through a gate in the fence surrounding the Parliament Hill precinct and carjacked a parliamentary vehicle assigned to ministers of the Crown, which he drove to the centre block Parliament building. RCMP officers on patrol in the precinct witnessed the carjacking and pursued the vehicle to the base of the Peace Tower. A photograph of Zahaf Bebo was taken by a tourist at the War Memorial during the shootings. It shows him holding the rifle and wearing a scarf over part of his face, with part of the war memorial behind him. Ottawa police seized the camera and then took their own photograph of the image using a cell phone. French-Canadian journalist William Raymond received a copy of the photograph via the Internet, anonymously. Apparently a copy of a tweet originating from the Ottawa police of the cell phone picture. Raymond then took a picture of the image as it was displayed on his computer monitor and posted it to Twitter a few hours later after confirming the image. The image was retweeted by an ISIL sympathizer, leading to erroneous media reports that the image originated from an ISIL Twitter account. Parliament Building's Zahaf Bebo entered the centre block through the main entrance under the Peace Tower, where Samon Sun was one of two security guards on duty. Sun saw the rifle in Zahaf Bebo's hand, immediately grabbed it, and pulled it towards the floor while yelling, Gun! Gun! Guns! In the ensuing struggle, Sun was shot in the foot and had to let go of the attacker. While other RCMP officers converged on Zahaf Bebo, Sun limped out of the building and calmly told the CBC reporter outside, I will survive. Just inside the center block, Zahaf Bebo exchanged gunfire with security personnel and was wounded. Zahaf Bebo then ran along the Hall of Honor corridor toward the Library of Parliament. Pursued by RCMP officers, he passed, on his left, the door to a committee room in which Stephen Harper and the Conservative members of Parliament were meeting. Directly opposite was the door to another caucus room, where a leader of the opposition, Thomas Mulcair, and New Democratic Party MPs were gathered. During the shooting, one bullet penetrated the outer doors to the NDP caucus room. Inside their room, NDP MPs dove for cover. Finally, Zahaf Bebo reached an alcove by the entrance to the Library of Parliament and hid out of sight of RCMP officers, who ordered him to drop his gun and surrender. The location of the alcove is near the office of the Sergeant-at-Arms of the House of Commons, Kevin Vickers.
Vickers, a distinguished policeman, commander and administrator with the RCMP before he joined the staff of the House of Commons in 2005, obtained a 9mm handgun from a lockbox and entered the hall. Vickers' security team, which had been chasing Zehaf Bebo, yelled to Vickers that the suspect was hiding in the alcove. Vickers immediately ran behind the other side of a nearby column, then dove past the column and fired upward at Zehaf Bebo. Witnesses and reports show RCMP Constable Curtis Barrett leading the tactical formation fired the shot that killed Zehaf Bebo after Bebo fired at his direction. CBC television cameras on the scene recorded over 30 shots fired in the final gunfight. Footage showed a group of RCMP officers converging near the alcove. Two loud gunshots are heard, then a large number of gunshots in rapid succession, then silence. Vickers was recorded by CBC video footage walking away from the shooting site, going to the Conservative Caucus room. Vickers explained to the Conservative Caucus what had happened and reportedly said either, I put him down, or, I have engaged the suspect. He is deceased, according to Vickers' niece. This is the first time in his career that he's shot anyone. Following the shooting, Harper's RCMP security detail arrived and evacuated him. While the Parliament buildings were put into lockdown, perpetrator and casualties. Perpetrator Michael Zehaf Bebo was identified by officials as the perpetrator of the shootings. According to court documents, he was born Joseph Paul Michael Bebo, but, in 1995, his parents legally changed his name to Joseph Paul Michael Abdullah Bulgasim Zehaf Bebo to better reflect the other half of his heritage. Initial reports put out by Reuters and US-based networks in the first few hours after the shooting said the shooter was born, Michael Joseph Hall, and changed his name after converting to Islam. But these proved unreliable and were contradicted the next day by Reuters and the major Canadian news sources in in-depth reporting. Zehaf Bebo grew up in eastern Canada, including Ottawa and Montreal. His mother is Susan Bebo, a French-Canadian Quebecer from Montreal and deputy chairperson of the Division of Canada's Immigration and Refugee Board. His father is a businessman, Bulgasim Zehaf, a Libyan immigrant to Quebec who opened the Tripoli Café in Montreal. Zehaf is reported to have fought in the 2011 Libyan Civil War. The Washington Times reported that Mr. Zehaf had returned to his hometown of Zawiya in Libya to join the uprising against the Muammar Gaddafi regime. The couple split up before Zehaf Bebo's birth but reconciled a short while after and were married. Zehaf and Bebo divorced in 1999. After the divorce, Zehaf Bebo was removed from a private school with strict discipline and put in a secondary school known for pupils fighting with other students from local schools. Zehaf Bebo continued to live in the Montreal area until 2007, when he spent time in Libya before moving to Western Canada to become a miner and labourer. Zehaf Bebo became a habitual offender with an extensive criminal record for several offences, including larceny, drug possession, and parole violations. He had received several criminal convictions, at least one of which resulted in a custodial sentence of 60 days incarceration. In November 2001, just after his 19th birthday, he was convicted of possessing a false credit card and impaired driving. In 2004, he pleaded guilty to drug possession for marijuana and PCP. He failed to appear at the trial date in 2006 but appeared three years later to plead guilty to marijuana possession and was given a discharge. In 2011, he was charged with robbery and uttering threats in Vancouver but only convicted of the lesser charge of uttering threats. He claimed that he committed the 2011 robbery so that he would be incarcerated in order to kick his drug habit. He received a psychiatric evaluation, but was determined to be fit to stand for trial. Baptized a Roman Catholic.
He converted to Islam in 2004 and had attended Sunni Muslim mosques in the British Columbia cities of Burnaby and Vancouver. A mosque in Vancouver, British Columbia, expelled him. His behavior was not normal, said David Ali, vice president of Masjid al-Salam Mosque in nearby Burnaby. He said, we try to be open to everyone, but people on drugs don't behave normally. Also, an acquaintance recalled that he had erratic behavior. He had said, the devil is after him, and was requested to stop attending the mosque after upsetting religious elders. The acquaintance believed he was mentally ill. Zahaf Bibo wanted to leave Canada. An associate of Zahaf Bibo reported he had discussed wanting to go back to Libya to study Arabic and Islam. At their October 23rd press conference, the RCMP said his mother told him that he wanted to go to Syria to join the anti-government rebels in the Syrian civil war, but she denied this stating that she told the RCMP that he was intending to travel to Saudi Arabia. He thought he would be happier in an Islamic country where they would share his beliefs. In a telephone interview with the press, Zahaf Bibo's mother said she grieves for the victims of the attack, not her son. In an email to the press, she also said, I am mad at my son, and said, he seemed lost and did not fit in. Zahaf Bibo arrived in Ottawa on or before October 2, ostensibly to pursue securing a passport. Zahaf Bibo had applied for a Canadian passport and a background check was in progress. RCMP Commissioner Bob Paulson said this issue was central in driving the attacks. Zahaf Bibo, who also had Libyan citizenship, applied for a Libyan passport renewal on October 2 and was refused the same day. Zahaf Bibo had received a Libyan passport in 2000 and then travelled to Libya in 2007. That document had expired, and Zahaf Bibo told officials that he wanted a new passport so he could visit family and friends in Libya. Zahaf Bibo had been staying at the Ottawa Mission, a homeless shelter in Ottawa near Parliament Hill. According to other residents of the mission, Zahaf Bibo and two other men had been trying to get a vehicle. Others said of Zahaf Bibo and the other two men, you knew they were up to something shifty. Pacing around a lot and everything, the vehicle used by Zahaf Bibo was purchased one day before the shootings. One resident of the mission noted that Zahaf Bibo's mood had changed three days before the attacks, and he attributed it to Zahaf Bibo going back on drugs. Zahaf Bibo reportedly told the other residents that he was anti-Canadian and to pray because the world is ending. Another resident reported that Zahaf Bibo had shown a lot of interest in the parliament buildings, including asking how easy was it to get into the parliament buildings a day before the attack. Multiple witnesses saw Zahaf Bibo engaged in a heated discussion with another man while waiting to register his purchase of the vehicle used in the shootings. According to a witness, Zahaf Bibo said, If soldiers bombed your family, wouldn't you want to kill them? Staff in the registry office asked him to lower his voice or leave. The purchase was disallowed by the office because of his out-of-province identification. The purchase was never registered and Zahaf Bibo pasted a piece of junk mail on the car to mimic a temporary license permit. How Zahaf Bibo obtained his gun has not been determined. At the time of the shootings, Zahaf Bibo was legally prohibited from possessing or acquiring firearms. Additionally, his previous criminal charges and convictions, history of drug abuse, and lack of a fixed address all would have prevented him from receiving a Canadian firearms license. A knife that Zahaf Bibo had with him on October 22 was determined to have originated from a relative's home. On November 15, it was reported that Zahaf Bibo's body had remained at the Ottawa coroner's office for examination. According to the procedure to be followed by the coroner, the examination must report the entry and exit wound of each gunshot wound, and a toxicology report. After the examination is complete, his remains must be buried according to Islamic convention. The issue of accepting his body for an eventual funeral was problematic for the Ottawa Muslim Association Mosque.
while denouncing what he did as a crime, a terrorist attack against a soldier who was serving the country. We say that if he's believing in God, if he's a Muslim, then he should be buried, said Imam Sami Metwali. We will give him a funeral service. However, on November 18, the coroner in an interview announced that the body was released over a week ago. The coroner did not release the details of the autopsy, when the body was released or whom the body was released to, citing legal restrictions. On February 26, 2015, the Ottawa Citizen reported that Sehaf Bibo was buried in Zawiya, Libya, by arrangements made by his family. Casualties Corporal Nathan Frank Cirillo, a 24-year-old Canadian soldier, was killed. He was a Class A reservist of the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders of Canada from Hamilton, Ontario. He was, as a chosen member of the ceremonial guard, on sentry duty at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at the National War Memorial when he was shot. Although several civilians immediately provided assistance for the wounded reservist, Cirillo died in hospital later that morning. Cirillo had a standard-issue Colt Canada C-7 rifle which, in accordance with standard practice, was unloaded. Samer and son, a House of Commons constable, was injured. When Zerhef Bebo arrived at the centre block, he was confronted by son. Son, who was unarmed, was shot in the foot while trying to wrestle away Zerhef Bebo's gun. Son was treated and released by Ottawa a Civic Hospital. Two other unidentified people who were injured in unspecified locations were treated and released at Ottawa a Civic Hospital.